Hi, I'm a full-time nerd, and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you all of the children's books that are coming out in the UK today. The books are grouped by age range and publisher, but don't worry, it will be very clear which book I'm talking about at any point. Timestamps for each section can be found in the description. Starting off with the seven-year-olds, we have Isadora Moon and the Shooting Star by Harriet Muncaster. Isadora Moon is special because she's different. Her mum is a fairy and her dad is a vampire, and she's a bit of both. Isadora is observing the night sky for a school project. Her class is learning everything about space and she decides to look at the stars for inspiration. But wait, what is that? Through the telescope, Isadora spots a shooting star that falls to Earth. After courageously finding the place where the star landed, Isadora discovers a new twinkling friend. Her name is Nova. She is a glow sprite and she is not supposed to be there. Even worse, Nova's moon kitten, Pluto, is lost and she needs Isadora's help to find him. Between magical campfires, space lessons, moon cheese and a glowing sleepover, Isadora will need to use all of her wits to help Nova find Pluto before her new friend has to fly back to the stars. Move Mountain by Corrine Avaris and illustrated by Greg McLeod. Being on the wrong side of the valley doesn't matter if you have the right kind of friends. Mountain has never seen the sunrise. Each morning the hills around him were washed with a warm glow, sometimes pink, sometimes orange. But the sun always rose behind his rocky back. So one morning, Bird and Bear put up on an ingenious and spectacular show that allows Mountain to experience the sunrise for the very first time. This imaginative celebration of friendship encourages creativity and kindness. Moving on to the seven to nine year olds, we have Freddy the Superstar by Neil Cameron. Freddy's life is mixed. He is a super powered robot, yay, who also has to go to school. But when Freddy and his pals get involved in the school science fair, his robot abilities mean he's suddenly the centre of attention, which Freddy 100% loves. Will Freddy let his brush with fame go to his head? Of course he will, but that might not go down so well with his friends. Indiana Bones and the Lost Library by Harry Heap and illustrated by Rebecca Bagley. Indiana Bones is back for a second dogtastic detective escapade. Once again, he and his bested friend Aisha have to gather their wits, courage and plenty of snacks to sniff out clues to solve a twisty mystery. On the hunt for the Avengers lost treasure, the intrepid travellers set off on another trek, this time to the Temple of Diana at Ephesus. But nothing is simple for our heroes, and the slippery serpent and stinky Ringo are still hot on their tails, determined to thwart their every move. Agent Asher, Operation Cyberchop by Sophie Dean and illustrated by Priyanka Suchadev. Agent Asher is back in the second installment of the action-packed spy adventure series. Top secret children's spy agency's newest recruit, Asher Joshi, is back in with a brand new mission. Asher is suspicious when evil teenage trillionaire Shelly Belly proposes to cut down all the trees in Asher's favourite park to make room for cyber oaks, the new tech trees. Asher's a top coder and super spy, so she should be able to face robot security parrots navigate a suspicious internship and a travel to Shelley's super confidential base in Scotland to crack the case. Will Asher and her robo hamster sidekick Tumble be able to protect the park and save the day? Rex, Dinosaur in Disguise by Ellis Dolan. Rex is king of the dinosaurs. Carnivores want to be him. Herbivores want to be eaten by him. That's until a pesky ice age comes along and he winds up. When he wakes up 65 million years later, human beings rule the roost. And if they get their hands on Rex, he'll wind up in a zoo or worse, a museum. Lucky for him, Rex isn't the only undercover creature in town. He's whisked out of danger by the one and only Bigfoot, who has been surviving among the humans undetected for years. Bigfoot and his friends show Rex how to get by in the human world, and soon there is only one thing left for him to do, get a job. Now that's easier said than done. And with a meddling nine-year-old neighbor to deal with and the constant risk of discovery, life couldn't be harder for a dinosaur in disguise. Moving on now, we have books for our 9 to 12 year olds. The Blackthorn Branch by Ellen Caldecott. Cass's older brother Byron has fallen in with the wrong crowd. It's soon clear these boys are wild, reckless, and not human at all. They are tied with Teg, fair folk, who tempt humans down into the dark places of the world. And Byron is tempted. When he goes missing, Cassie and her cousin Sean followed his trail to an old abandoned railway tunnel which goes down and down into Anwen, 
the underworld. Here they find that the Talwith Tech are restless and angry. Their leader, Gwyneth, wants to protect Anwin from the damage humans are doing to the world. Byron is part of her plan, but Cassie won't let her big brother be part of anyone's plan. Can she rescue her brother before it's too late? While the Storm Rages by Phil Earl. September 1939. Britain is on the brink of war. As Noah Price's dad marches off to fight, he asks his son to honour one vital promise that he will keep their dog, Gwyn, safe. No matter what, Noah agrees, but his best intentions are crushed when the government advises people to have their pets put to sleep as part of the war preparations. Children are heartbroken. Cues outside vet surgeries stretch for miles, but Noah is a resourceful and impetus child. He won't just do what he is told. Far from it. With his two friends in tow, he makes the pledge to go on the run and to save as many animals as he can, whatever the cost. So begins the most thrilling of adventures involving a Solvalan Ark, a motley crew of animals and a crash spitfire. Can Noah possibly save the animals and lead them all to the promised land? The Clockwork Queen by Peter Bunzel and illustrated by Lyra Vizrin. When her grandmaster father is imprisoned in the dungeons of St. Petersburg, Sophie plans to help him escape through an incredible chess-playing automaton called the Clockwork Queen. But will she be able to outwit the Empress herself? A page-turning historical adventure from Cockhart author Peter Bunzel. Stitched up by Steve Cole and illustrated by Aureole Vidal. Tricked into working in an illegal garment factory in Hanoi, Anne's life has become a daily hell. She is desperate to escape but it's a path fraught with danger. The horrific real-life cost of fast fashion is exposed in this gripping tale of survival from best-selling author Steve Cole. Aubrey and the Terrible Spiders by Horatio Clare. When Aubrey is stung by a very polite wasp, he realises there is something strange going on in rushing wood. With help from his friends Ariadne the Housewife, Silvio the Silverfish and Lupo the Huskeeper, the young warrior sets out to fight the Terrible Spiders and their genius creator and just maybe save the world. Chameleon Dad by Debbie Thomas. When Connie gets a letter from her dad she thought was dead, she sets out to discover why he left her eight years ago, sitting in an airport cafe with only her pet chameleon for company. Since then she lives with her foster mum, a cleaner at the airport, and lives in hope of someday seeing her dead again in the place she last saw him. With her new friend, a fearless fossil hunting boy called Thio, she tracks her dad down, but as he reveals his true colours, Connie starts to wonder if she's made a very big mistake. Looking for Emily by Fiona Longmuir. When 12-year-old Lily moved to the sleepy seaside town of Edge, she's sure that nothing exciting is ever going to happen to her again. But when she stumbles upon a secret museum hidden in the middle of town, she realises that there might be more to her new home than meets the eye. The museum of Emily is filled with the belongings of one seemingly ordinary girl. A girl who, many years ago, disappeared from the town without a trace. With the help of her new friends, Sam and Jay, Lily is determined to solve the mystery and find out who Emily was, why she disappeared, and who has created this strange hidden museum. Finally, we move on to our last section, books for 12 to 16 year olds. The Battle of Cable Street by Tanya Landman and illustrated by Sarah Mulvaney. Political tensions are heightening on the streets of Stepney, and as Oswald Mosley comes to power, Elsie begins to see friendships torn apart. Award-winning author Tanya Landman explores the rise of anti-Semitic fascism in 1930s London in this gripping new story. This is not the end by Molly Morris. Ever since the sudden deaths of his parents, 17-year-old Hugh has developed a serious preoccupation with endings, and things can get a little complicated when he meets Olivia Moon, a high school outcast who can't die. But if he wants to learn more about her impossible power, he'll have to drive Olivia to New York to help retrieve a stolen crate of her most treasured possessions. As his feelings for Olivia grow, Hugh embarks on a road trip he'll never forget, but can she help him to accept that unsatisfying, messy endings are just a part of life follow two teens trying to figure out their own stories oxygen mask a graphic novel by jason reynolds and illustrated by jason griffin and so for anyone who didn't really know what it means to not be able to breathe really breathe for generations now you know and those who already do you'll be nodding yep yeah this is exactly how it is intimately set within the walls of a family home this book is an incredible artifact of the historic year we have all lived through with travels from the depth of despair but not without hope the mundane details contained within four walls becomes our sanctuary this is a gift in a commemoration of a time and place of a worldwide pandemic of loss 
of the murder of George Floyd. It is a reminder of how, in uncertain times, we can cling to the simple things for respite, for hope. A reminder of how comforting books and artworks are in times of extreme stress. Fight Back by A.M. Dasu, an empowering story about finding identity and the courage to fight for it. Alaya is an ordinary 13-year-old living in the Midlands. She's into her books, shoes, K-pop, and she's a Muslim. And she's always felt at home where she lives, until a terrorist attack in her area changes everything. As racial tensions increase and she starts getting bullied, Alaya decides to begin wearing a hijab to challenge how people in her community see her. But when her school bans the hijab and she is intimidated and attacked for her choices, she feels isolated. Soon Alaya realises that other young people from different backgrounds also struggle with their identity and feel alone, scared and judged. Should she try to blend in or can she find allies to help her fight back? Channeling all of her bravery, Alaya decides to speak out. Together can Alaya and her friends halt the tide of hatred rippling through their community? An essential read to encourage empathy, challenging stereotypes, exploring prejudice, racism, Islamophobia. Three Girls by Katie Clapham. We just want to show that friendships forged here are the real deal. Genuine. Built to last. That sort of thing. For the brochure. Do you mind? The school may be making them pose together for photos, but Minnie, Lena and Alice are not friends and they have other things to worry about. Minnie, the athlete. Her whole life has been sport, but what if it's not all she wants her life to be? How do you even start to change your future all by yourself? Lena, the princess. She has always resented being in Minnie's shadow, so when a freak accident changes all of her arch rival's plans, and Lena could become a queen bee at last. But is ruling the school all she dreamed it would be? And and then there's Alice, the really tall one. Alice has friends already. She's even got her eye on a, on a potential crush, but she's also got a secret. And that secret is about to bound into all three girls' lives and change them forever. Finding Jupiter by Callis Rowe and illustrations by Rebecca Glending. Ray has no time for romance. She's queen of the roller rink. She writes found poetry and she's got her eye set on her own independent future. Besides, She's seen what loving someone too much and losing them can do to a person. Orion, on the other hand, would like to be smooth with the girls. Just once. He looks like the jock his father wants him to be, but really he's a hopeless romantic. When he spots Ray at the rink, it feels like the stars have aligned, but now it seems like something in their family's past will stand in their way and cross their stars forever. An honest, unpredictable and funny, heartbreaking, dual point of view love story to fall head over heels for. That's all I've got for you today, but be sure to subscribe so that you won't miss another new release and to follow along with what I'm reading. See you soon!